going? What is going on with everybody? It is your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young Guy, coming to you live in the Green Dungeon, giving it to you real, raw, rugged, and uh, got some on the other line. I'm going to let him introduce himself, man. Who do we have here? What's up, man? My name is Real Sick. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Jersey, and I'm a rapper slash battle rapper slash performer, artist, all of those things, you know? Hey, man, I just want to say before I get into this, uh, you possibly, I might have to, I don't want to say this for sure, and I'm like, ooh, I forgot about him. But I think, I want to say this with, say, 83% sure, surety, if that's a word, uh, mm -hmm. that you might be my new favorite battle rapper. Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that there's a trend going on in Jersey. A lot of my favorite battle rappers of all time, from Suge, that's Jersey. Uh, when I found mm -hmm. about Twerk, I was like, oh, Twerk is the greatest rapper to ever touch a pen. And yeah. then uh, I think it now might be real sick is the greatest rapper to ever touch a pen at this point. Uh, you're my Appreciate new favorite battle rapper, Thank man. You. So I just want to give you a praise before we get into this yeah. interview, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. And yeah, I know, you know, that's why it, when you see my battles, I say Jersey was such a force because I'm so proud to be from here because, you know, we do, we uh, look who I'm following, yeah. you know, like <laughs> I'm, I'm following these great guys you know so i appreciate that a lot man thank you and it's crazy because i've been i'm a big battle rap fan but this year i don't know if it was due to due to the pandemic or what but i just kind of been out of like the loop with battle rap and i recently probably yeah. just i'm gonna say i just got back on heavy at the end of a uh, of a uh, what was the tournament you're in? Uh, not Summer Madness. Ultimate Madness. Ultimate Madness. Ultimate. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I didn't even see your 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 uh, uh, Jada Nightwing uh, battle live. I seen it afterwards. Oh, okay. I didn't see it live. So right. the reason I even found out about you was just by chance. I happened to be on YouTube and I seen that um the watch was live where they you know where um, mm, where did Dwayne watch live? And yeah, Lush. And, yeah, yeah. And I seen that you Avocado. yeah, and I seen you were battling um, Spade. So mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, oh man, it's probably gonna be like just a random like bad PG battle. I was like, I'm gonna right, watch right. it. Hey yeah. man, goodness gracious, bro, this, <laughs> that is that was a, a hell of an introduction, bro. So yeah, good, yeah. man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. So yeah, I, I just want to kind of tap into that battle before we get into uh -huh. anything. Uh, that yeah. battle right there, man. That was. I feel like I've watched uh, a, a lot of your battles since then. And man, you probably have my favorite. It's not even about the bar; it's the way you delivered it and the, your delivery. You might have just my favorite altogether line in that, just like of yours in that battle. Um, which one? Which one? I don't know if you can guess. It's not even like a complex, like crazy one. I think it's just the, your delivery and the way you said it was just. Uh, I, I'll let you guess if you have a. Uh, if you, if you the, probably have the, one. the one everybody quotes is the subconscious that one, bar. It's crazy. It's the one before that, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. One either after that or before that. The um the uh fifty two card pickup that one I don't know That's why it. I love that bro I because, love that one. <laughs> you know you know why uh I think I'm standing out a lot uh especially this year um is because of like the way I set up that bar um a lot of people when they rap especially battle rap they'll have you know they have the same kind of tempo or or rhythm. To, to like da 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 like they set it up every like four bars in a certain way to where when you're you're a fan you're kind of you're kind of trained to listen like all right four bars uh we're, we're three bars in the next bar should be a punchline you know like it's it's very formulaic hmm. and um i think i'm standing out a lot because you know i've rapped Besides battle rap, so there's a flow to it. I don't just rhyme with card pickup at the end of the bar. I said bars illa dog. I'm an artist with off. No dog, you an artist with all filler. Raw killer, walk with a forty. More liquor, large clip. I spark triggers. Uh, you see what I'm saying? I I do it all. I I rhyme internally. I do the you know the multis, and then it ends in a punch. Versus, you know, there's a lot of categorization with battle rappers. Like some people just do multi-syllable rhyming and then other people just do punchlines. You know, you're going to be the best when you're able to do everything. So that's that's a good example of, uh, you know, my style and stuff. So Love that bar. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a, I wouldn't ever call myself a rapper, but I mm -hmm. can, I know I can rap. Like I have the ability to do so if I wanted to. So right. I think that's 
why I like you because I can tell that you can rap. There's a lot of people right. in battle rap that you can tell don't really rap. They just yeah. battle rap, you know, because they're, they're their structure, their flow, the way that they yeah. rhyme. So just the way that you say you rhyme with the, the, the my, my bars, like your bars all fill it, the gods, like yeah. that. I could, yeah, that's yeah, like some yeah, rapping yeah. stuff. Like, that's not like that could have been yeah. on the beat. So yeah. is that something that you consciously, uh, or ironically, uh, subconsciously, if you're talking about that, bar, that <laughs> yeah. you thought of? Like, is that a, a subconscious thing or a conscious thing that you put that in your battle raps? Well, well, I've been <laughs> rapping since I was like eight. Hmm. So I mean, you see the yeah. studio in the background, you know? Like I, I, I rap, rap. You know, I'm a. I, I got introduced to when I first started listening to hip hop. I got introduced to the concept of. A MC versus a rapper, mm. right? So you got different kind of rappers. You got, you know, fast rappers, slow rappers, battle rappers, freestylers, storytellers, yeah. uh, party mm-hmm. rappers. You got all these different kind of rappers, lyricists, and an MC is supposed to be able to do everything, mm. right? So that's that's the idea that I got introduced to, and I always aspired to be that. So you could put me on a trap beat and I could double time flow the shit. You could put me on a storytelling record and I'll tell a you know uh, a captivating story. You yeah. could put me in an a cappella battle and I'm gonna kill that shit too. You know, so like so it's just the way that I rap. You know, I'm inspired by people that rhyme like that. You know, Cool G rap is one of the people that and every time I, I was born in ninety four, mm-hmm. so I had to go back and listen to all of this shit. You know, <laughs> Crooked Eye is one of my favorite rappers ever. You know, Eminem, Lloyd Banks, Big L, Big Pun, people like that that rap like that. So when I started, I mean, I've been battling since high school, all these random fucking battles and stuff. So when I started battling on camera, you know, in, in my beginning battles, you could tell I'm I'm still kind of I don't know the difference between battle rap and you know, rhyming over a beat because I'm rhyming a little too much instead yeah. of, you know, but, but as, you know, as I, as I started to take it serious and, you know, do more battles and get in the practice of it, uh, yes, yeah, flow switch ups, um, you know, rhyming like I do, it, it, it is how I subconsciously think of bars, right? But, at the same time, I know it's what makes, you know, people always tell me that's what makes you stand out. Besides, you know, the look and everything, the, the way that you rap is what makes you stand out, you know, because you can, like you like you said, you could tell I rap. Yeah. All the rappers, you know, Mickey Fax, Daylight, people like that will hit me up like, yo, you, you, you're one of them ones, you know, because they, they could tell too. They're, they're, they're at the top of the level with that shit. So, um... Yeah, I do do that as much as I can. Um, battle rap is such a condensed form of writing that you kind of have to. It's kind of, which is why this, you know, this quiet room shit is so interesting because you could just go. Yeah. But you know, yeah. originally it's kind of based on reaction. It's like a stand-up comedy set. You know, you know you're doing good. Kind of the more reaction or crowd participation that you get so you're kind of trying to write in a way that you're like all right this right here is like this is the point if you're writing with an angle or you know a punchline whatever like it's based on that right like trying to get a reaction or whatever but um and dissecting your opponent so like it's a mix of those two worlds and i try to add this rapidy rap shit into it as much as i can you know now, don't let me forget that you just brought up crowd participation and kind of like uh-huh. the stand-up thing because I don't want to forget that. But I kind of want to go back to something you just said with, uh, I don't know why I'm bringing this up. You just brought up uh, Crooked Eye. Crooked Eye, uh-huh. man, he's like a rapper's rapper. Like, if that's like a person that like, you ever that think like that person was put on earth to do this one thing isn't it's like yeah. he, it's obvious yeah. like this is this guy's purpose on earth like when yeah. he raps i feel like he go to sleep and like be waking up in the middle of the night like oh i gotta write this bar down like he's Crazy. just such a rapper's rappers There's, so the fact yeah. that you say you inspired by him that's that, that makes a lot of sense yeah he's definitely you know when him when like slaughterhouse popped up that was 2008 yeah i was in eighth grade you know and that that was that was around the time that I was doing my hip hop history. You know, yeah. I was on LimeWire heavy. Mm. <laughs> if you remember LimeWire, downloading course. you know uh, Naughty by Nature and Pac albums and LL Cool J and whoever, do, whoever like I would hear about like Master Ace. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just whoever. And I'm listening to them while the, you know, the kids in my class are listening to Chingy. Shout out to Chingy. But, like, I was on that I was on that other shit, you know? And, and Crooked Eye is... 2008 is kind of when I popped out of that bubble and I was like, let me see if there's anything current that I like. Of course. I got introduced to Tech 9 you know? Uh, M was coming back. So that's kind of what made me be like, all right, uh, that's when I started... You know, watching battle rap again, uh, and then um, you know, crooked eye. I heard Slaughterhouse because I knew Royce. I knew Royce's voice because I was an M fan, you know. And then I heard, so I clicked on the uh, or I kept listening to the song. I forget how I came across it, and then Crook just fucking bodied everybody on the song, and Crazy. I was like, "What the? F- <clears throat> who is this dude?" You know what I mean? And then I started listening to him, and then um, so yeah, that that vibe. That, that you say he just wakes up. There's two people I think like that. Him and um, you. You familiar with Nino Bless? Am I? I don't think I am. Uh, you ever heard the the first Slaughterhouse song ever? It had one other guy on it, so it was you know Crook, Joe, Joel, Royce, and then Nino Bless. That was nah, the fifth guy. I, 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 right? I don't think I've heard that. Listen to listen to his shit, especially now. He's a fucking alien, bro. Mm. He is ridiculous. So like, li- you could listen to that first song and then listen to one of his current songs. He does he does this thing at the end of every year. It's called like Rhyme of the Year. You know what I mean? Like those things. He he's crazy. So he's definitely one of those dudes too. I'm writing you his know? name down um, right now, so I don't. Yeah, him. yeah. He's a uh, Nino Bless, okay. and uh, you know, I'm lucky enough for him to be somebody that. I talk to and get advice okay. to, uh, from too. Um, you know, he's like battle rap Illuminati. He's best friends with all the top tier guys. Okay. You know what I mean? So like okay. he, you know, so he when he found me that that's that's one of the reasons he hit me up was because the way that I rap and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm going on a tangent. Yeah, now Crook Crook doesn't Crook <clears throat> doesn't get uh, the he he can whoever your favorite rapper is he can body them on a song, bro. Like I, I had to learn this because M was M is one of my favorite rappers. But every time Crook was on the song, he kind of fucking <laughs> like spazzed. And yeah. M had to, M had to. You could tell M, M knows that too because you know Crook will have a sixteen <laughs> bar verse, and then M will come with like a sixty four. He's <laughs> like, I know, I know this motherfucker is like crazy like that, you know. So, um, yes. Yeah. Crook, Crook is one of the craziest. But yeah, check Nino out too. He's an alien as well. I just wrote his name down. I think we yeah. have a similar story because I remember being in middle school and uh, it actually wasn't Crooked. It was Royce for me. Uh, I remember like discovering Royce the Five Nine. I was like, I don't think there's been a rapper to rap better than this. I'm like, this guy's crazy. So mm-hmm. just going through that phase and then trying to show him to other people at that time in middle school. They're like, what is like? Well, I don't want to listen to this. Like, yeah. shut up. Like, I want to yeah, listen to yeah. whatever was popping around that time. And it's funny you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever addressed this on my channel, but this is really funny. I actually interviewed Chingy this year, and mm. he put out a country song, apparently. And uh, I guess they, like, disabled the comments of the country song. So when everybody, all the country fans seeing that, they just, like, I guess used my video uh, of the interview as the comment section. Obliterated mm. him. Goodness gracious, man. <laughs> Get out of country! What is this? <laughs> Go back to rap. <laughs> they were That's in their crazy. bag, yeah. so I yeah. thought it was really funny. But no, I definitely, uh, I definitely feel you on like you know listening to all this lyrical rap, and everybody's like, I want to listen to. I don't know what was popping at that time. But, but see, I had to, I had to get to like where I am now, to where you know that stuff. I, I, I wasn't throwing a shot at Chingy, you know? for sure, for but sure. Like, because like now <coughs> I know that. Joe Butter said music is what feelings sound like, right? Mm. And that never clicked with me until I got a little older. You know, that's what it is. As much as I love one mic, yeah. I don't want to hear that in a in a club. For you sure. know what I mean? But <laughs> also in a club, you can put on peanut butter jelly time and everybody's going to go crazy. It's just a vibe, right? So, like, I, I understand, um, you know the different because now I, I I listen to everything you know I, I, I've i been bumping Juicy J's new album that mm. shit is fire and Russ's new album mm. you know what I mean like he's crazy too so like there, there's a contrast Crook put some shit out recently that that's crazy you know so um, now I'm a, li- I'm a little more open minded but back then yeah it was all just 
lyrical man he's not he's only rhyming the last word he's not <laughs> rhyming the last couple words there's no punchlines yeah. you know what I mean I was, I was one of those but you know you, you do have to open your mind and, and listen listen to everything you know who just bought an album last night who could rap really good Jack Harlow who Jack Harlow can rap really good Jack Harlow is fire bro he's hard bro. he is crazy he's hard. Uh, I, I, I haven't heard the new album check yet, it out bro but, uh, please yeah obviously out. I heard him cause of what's popping of course but then you know I I listened to his two EPs that before he put that, out. Yeah, the 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 one that What's Poppin' was on, yeah. and uh, the one before that it was dope. And then that um, that shit he just put out, what's the name of it? It's like some dude's name. Uh oh, Tyler Does, Hero. Tyler yeah, Hero. Tyler Hero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that shit is fire. Yes. I thought it was so real that he said uh. But, uh, most of the people they that look, like me. look like me, yeah. yeah, yeah, because that I I get the same thing, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, like um, you know, I I don't know if it's a topic later, but I, I'm sick. I'm Indian, and uh, most of the people that will have something hateful to say, I click on this shit, and they're they're Indian. Yeah. And it's like, bro, you're supposed to, and and it's not a majority thing. You know what I mean? In the sense of most people that come across me are are happy that there's representation. Yeah. You know, but there, but the most hate that I get is from people like that. It's like, yo, I'm shut up, man. Go, <laughs> go, go, eat a cheesecake or something. Brighten your day up, like. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Well, which is which is really crazy because I was gonna bring that up. Uh, I've mm-hmm. learned so much about like the the sick of lifestyle just looking at your interviews, listening to your bars or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, because one, when I was introduced to that, I was introduced to it by a guy. Who uh, said he was Sikh, and you always mm. say it's not Sikh, it's Sikh. Yeah, and he yeah, was yeah. a Sikh person, but he pronounced it as Sikh. I don't know if you ever right. seen. It's like a, I forget. It's like a. It was a comedy century. Like it was. It was a the the late night thing. I guess they were doing like mm. a little show. They're doing like a little thing about it, and they were saying like, do Americans uh, realize the difference between uh, somebody who's like Muslim versus a Sikh? Yeah, and then right. they interviewed somebody who was Sikh. And he said Sikh. So I was like, oh, okay, right. I guess they're Sikhs. But then I listen right. to you, and I'm like, oh, it's Sikhs. And I've heard you break it down about the Great Britain colonizing thing. So is, yeah, it like yeah, a, yeah. is it a thing where people in your community I use the word Sikh at all? Or is he just like a, kind of like an outlier? Yeah, like, he, no, he's not <clears throat> an outlier, but it's like, it's like um, people people pronounce it. It's like, it's like if you ever hear, like, a, let's say you meet somebody from... Um, Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. right? But they don't say Puerto Rico like the way they're sp- saying it. They say Puerto Rico, okay. right? So like that's what it is. It's in Punjabi, our language. It's sick. Hmm. That's what it means. Sick means to learn. It means like a student. Yeah. Like 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 uh, that's that's the concept of our religion that we're constantly learning. You know. So like, um, yeah, it's pronounced sick. That's how you say it, sick. But like like I said, yeah, the, the colonizers pronounced it Sikh and then you know I'll, also I think it's you know people people just try to okay. distinguish it away from the word Sikh right because you know in 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 our language there's a lot of like our letters and, and enunciations so like the H is like there for a reason because yeah. it's like Sikh <laughs> but like it's a little extra like right but like you know when people say here they'll just say Sikh right but yeah, it's pronounced sick. That's how it is. The seek comes from people trying to, you know, make it and make it more digestible. So I, I understand why they do it, but I, I think you know, you gotta get people to say it how it's said. Mm-hmm. That's how it's said. It's sick, you know. So that's why, and that's why I have it in my name too. You know, that's one of the reasons because in America, a lot of people don't know the difference. Um, you know, I battled in London, and when I went there. You know, we're very known in London because we helped out in a lot of wars. Yeah. There's a lot of acts of bravery that, you know, medals, Medal of Honors that six have gotten. So we're kind of known a little more over there. And and in Canada, there's six in government and stuff. Um, but in America, you know, there hasn't really been any sick representation mm. that much. You know what I mean? So that's why, you know, even when I go to battles, you know, people will have bars about these other faiths. That's not me. You know, <laughs> to me, it, it always, it, it, I, I get it now and I accept it now because I'm like, all right, it comes with the territory. It's not true. And if, if you're like dissing like another 
another community, but you're trying to like attack me. It's not really attacking me, so I'm kind of getting points right now. Yeah, but they lost. You're talking about they lost. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like exactly. you can't you so, can't come to a round and be like you muzzle, ain't you? Well, I muzzle the Glock, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you just that. lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but um, I try to take every chance that I can to, um, you know, like raise awareness about my people. Um, which another another thing I I do have to say right now in um, Punjab, there's a lot of injustices. The I was going to talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a lot of injustices happening to our people with those protests. You know, uh, that that dude in office is like tr- is like Trump was. You know what I mean? Mm. In in the sense of like he's he's very he he gives off this like i i'm learning this a lot too about you know indian media cuz my 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 parents are from india i'm i was born and raised here but i'm learning their media is just like you know the the media here hmm. that you know there's they don't have one story so it so it makes the truth uh you know like bendable yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. all these different people are saying different things so like one side of the media is you know the the which is in a minority is telling the truth mm-hmm. which is like yo these farmers are being affected <clears throat> most of the farmers are sick you know what i mean so we're getting affected by by a large um like a large margin from these laws that were passed that uh you know like to to sell Farmlands to private companies, it's this whole thing, right? Uh, I don't want to butcher anything, so please, you know, go go do your research on it. Um, but um, yeah, so so one side will be telling what's actually happening, like these farmers are in the streets and you know they're they're protesting for for their rights, but then you know the the majority of the media is saying, nah, though we we stand with the farmers, but those guys aren't farmers. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to spin the narrative and. Uh, you know, I just, it, it, it just, it's so aggravating. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, raise awareness about that. I, I, I post about it every day on my story just to get, you know, people, so, so people would understand. It's a very complicated issue, I think. Um, but yeah, we did have the largest protest ever, <laughs> which is, which is kind of crazy. So, you would think there would be more uh, kind of like American like uh, media uh, outlets or just Amer- American attention mm-hmm. talking about it because it was like 250 million or 200 something. Crazy. Like, that's yeah, crazy, yeah. right? I'm it's looking crazy. at videos out there and like, bro, like they're like, because I heard that they're like prepared to be out there for like months and months. Mm-hmm. So I'm they're cooking food and yeah, I'm yeah. like, bro, I've never <laughs> been to a protest. They cook it like, I'm like, <laughs> I want to go protest now, you know? So it's like, yeah, yeah. so I feel like when you guys protest, it, I don't know if it's because of that we're in it for a long haul, but it seemed more like a community just kind of gathering, mm-hmm. uh, even like less less of a protest, but more like, hey, this is a community standing together for what mm-hmm. we think is right, you know, which I guess yeah. is a protest. But it just felt different just looking at the way you guys kind of uh, gathered around. Yeah, together. because, you know, ser- service is one of the things that Sikhs <laughs> talk about a lot. So, like, you know, if you ever go to a Sikh temple, it doesn't matter what your background is, what you believe in. We accept everybody. Mm. Um, you just got to take your shoes off and cover your head, right? So you go, you listen to the prayer, and then everybody sits down and has a meal, right? It doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, your status, whatever. Everybody sits on the ground, and then people go to the kitchen, grab the food, and serve the food to everybody, right? So serving the food is like part is like one of one of the things we do, you know. So while the protests were going on, that's one of the things that, like, uh, organizations like Casa Aid were doing things like that, where they were, you know, passing food out, yeah. and you know, so yeah, that's that's they're 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 war we're warriors, bro. So <laughs> we're gonna be out there till till they change it. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, it's it's just crazy to see, you know, how like the the police brutality and stuff, especially like being from America and seeing how you know minorities get treated over here and then realizing how we get treated over there like we don't have like a place of our own mm. if it, it feels like you know what I mean because like people want to say so bad that you know so like all right so let me let me break this down so like in 1947 up until like for like a hundred years the British 
were in India, right? Yeah. And Pakistan used to be part of India. Pakistan didn't exist until 1947 because when the British left, they were supposed to give each major faith, six Hindus and Muslims, they were supposed to give them like a third of each thing. And six had most of the North, right? Um, and so it was supposed to be Pakistan, uh, Hindustan, and then uh, Khalistan, mm. right? Which is for us. So Hindustan is India, right? And then obviously Pakistan is most of the Muslims went there. But then we we were kind of just stuck in India, right? So we, we didn't feel like we had a place of our own. So then for the longest time, people try to say, you know, you, you should... Uh, a, a, like anybody that brings up the idea of Khalistan are, are said to be terrorists. Mm. In the media, they're... Uh, uh, promoted as anti-nationalists but it's like yo we would feel like we don't have a place of our own and look now shit is happening to us and nothing like like you guys are treating us like we're not part of the part of the country yeah. but you want us to <clears throat> feel like we're part of the country right Bollywood they they treat Punjabi culture how you know uh, people in America appropriate black culture mm. how black culture is like the main thing, the music, the every everything, they'll appropriate it and they'll put it in their movies. And they'll, you know, it's the same thing with Punjabi culture. They'll t they'll take our music. Mm. They'll make you know people that aren't sick will be acting as sick in a movie. They'll have the turban, the beard, everything, and it'll be all this great symbolism. But then when shit goes on, everybody in Bollywood is quiet right now, mm. and everybody is calling them out like, "Yo, you make all these movies about us, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta say something, right?" So. Um, it's it's just a shit show over there right now, bro. So yeah, I'm I, I'm just trying to spread awareness about it as question. much as I can. I'm good question. Mm -hmm. Is it is it because you said like you guys don't really have a place to call like you know home or whatnot? Yeah. Is it similar to I don't know if you, I don't know how much you know about this the Palestine Israel situation? I'm not too familiar with it. Okay. Uh, I I just know, you know, they've been at war for a minute. <laughs> they have a conflict. Okay, yeah, For like the yeah, people, yeah, yeah. the people who want to call it Palestine, they just don't feel like they have a place where they can call it home. So when you mm -hmm. said that, that kind of um, made me think about that. And yeah. I, I think it's interesting to kind of go back a little bit what you're talking about. Uh, you know, just kind of the word "seek" and "sick" in the way that it just kind of changed because of the colonizer. Yeah. Because uh, I think I think white people are very funny people. I think they just like they're like ah, <laughs> right. sick. Huh, I can't I can't say that word. I'm gonna say seek because seek, they right. do that all the time. Like <laughs> Africa wasn't called Africa until a white man called Africa. It was uh, called Kemet. You know, it was something completely different. They were like, oh, I'm just gonna yeah, change yeah. it. So like they always do that. So I thought that was just really funny that they were just like, ah, I'm gonna call it seek today. <laughs> we don't call that sick anymore. I didn't I didn't know that. So is that why you know who B dot is? Yeah. Yeah, right? we so call like, comedic science yeah, and all that. Yeah, comedic science. Yeah. So that's what that is. Yeah. Okay, it's called. That's it, fine. Yeah, Africa used to be called Kemet, and uh, mm -hmm. they went over there and they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna call it something else." So they called it Africa. So yeah, that's why it's like that. I hate that so much, just, man. And that's why I, I remember. Yeah, I'm about to say, I remember, if you ever see somebody spell Africa with the K, I think that's just them trying to keep the roots of the Kemet oh, because the it Kemet. starts with the K. Oh, yeah. got it. So there you go. Right that's there. dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, I remember <laughs> seeing this. I could tie battle rap into this. I remember seeing this behind the scenes video of uh, when URL went to um, London for the first time. Yeah. And, you know, Beasley and everybody yeah. was in a museum. And then they're looking at all this stuff from Africa and they're like, look at this. Look at all this shit they stole from us. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, like, it's the same thing. The diamond that's in the Queen's uh, crown mm -hmm. is called the Koinur diamond. Mm. And it was the same diamond that the last king of Punjab had. Wow. And now now they, they it was this big ass diamond, but you know, they tried to make it smaller and they kept fucking up so they ended up making it like real small mm. and it's one of the diamonds in the Queen's crown. It's like that's that's our shit, bro. Like crazy. if you go yeah, all the <laughs> weapons they got from us, all of that, it's like it's crazy, man. That's but, crazy. That's uh yeah. Damn, that's that's wild. Now I'm just thinking I didn't even think about this, but like <laughs> a lot of like a lot of like people that are like of color, black people mm -hmm. Uh, just like anybody really of color, uh, well, not all of them, but a lot of people. I don't know if you would, I don't, cause you, cause you, you have like you wear head wraps and like that's like kind of part of the mm -hmm. culture. A lot of people of color, like if you look back of their, um, like if you look at the ancient Egyptian paintings, they have on mm -hmm. like head coverings. If you got a head wrap, do you know like yeah. if is that a, is that like a tie between anything? I've just thought about this. I don't, I don't know. I I I know that um, in, in like, I think it signifies like a crown. 
Mm. That's how we look at it. So, like, we look at, you know, that's why most of the time I'm wearing a head wrap. Right now I'm chilling. I just got a beanie. But most of the time, that's what that's what the turban is. It's a symbolism of, of royalty. Mm. You know, like, uh, it's, it's like a crown. So, like, you know, six, especially back in the day, um, their, their turban would have jewelry on it it yeah. would have something in the front and then something hanging to the side i know in uh a lot of uh like african cultures people wear turbans as well yeah. i think that's what the symbolism is but i know that um in like south asia turbans are like tims in new york mm. right it's like a regional thing so like everybody just wears turbans even regardless of faith but that that's one of the things I tell people when I tell them how to distinguish the difference between a Sikh and a Muslim and all of that. Um, besides, like the bracelet, that's like one of the things. But um, so so outside of South Asia, when you're in multicultural societies like Australia, Canada, UK, America, and you see somebody with a turban, nine times out of ten they're Sikh. Mm. That's that's you know I'm only saying that because Nick Cannon. Yeah. You know, he wears, he wears a turban too And like, you know, I, you never know But like, most of the time The turban and the beard is like, that's our thing mm. You know, so um, But yeah, th that's as far as I know About the origin of uh, The turban Sorry if I'm yeah. also pressing issue, but I'm just I'm I'm a history book, no, no, so no. that's yeah, always too, something that's just like, okay, okay, that's cool Yeah, I love, I love ancient history yeah. a lot Man, yeah, so yeah, I didn't know about the the Kemet thing, but yeah. now th that's why I asked about it because I'm very interested in you know ancient history because like I my view on it is like like people nowadays they claim like all right this is how history was and this is, it's like that's n like you guys don't know shit man you guys are guessing you guys just have a little piece of information and you're like all right this is how it you know so that's why you know everywhere you go people have different versions of of it you know. That's like very interesting. That's like yeah, you see twenty yeah, twenty, yeah. you see somebody get canceled for something, and then it comes <clears throat> out like the full story, and it's like, oh, okay, actually, that person mm -hmm. didn't do that what we thought it was. So it's like, right. ah, so we just go off a right. little piece of evidence and we blow it up. So that's yeah, life. And yeah. um, to kind of go back, because I said I didn't want to forget about the crowd participation thing, and I still don't want to forget about comedy, that. Yeah, 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 comedy thing. So mm. I'm not. Uh, I also wouldn't say I'm a comedian by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but I have been on stage. Uh, doing comedy stuff I'll say that mm -hmm. so I performed and like, I feel like when I do it I know that I'm about to kill when I get that first laugh before that first laugh butterflies I'm like oh my gosh what's going yeah. on so I want to compare it to mm -hmm. battle rap because now that you're in these small rooms yes you have like these small reactions and stuff going on in the background but how do you know that you are like do you are you already in your groove like when you first start or do you need that first like ooh ah like how, how do you do that in like normally, yeah. Like when the crowds were around, it's same thing. Mm -hmm. Right when I get the first, the first thing, I'm like, all right, just turn yeah. up time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, now I gotta just go quick. That's why you'll notice, kind of like I noticed. I do this um, when I when I say I'm about to cook this motherfucker. Right? <laughs> that that comes from the first. Every time I get one reaction, <laughs> I did it in England. I did it in my PG. Uh, my last battle you did I against got with Magic. Yeah, I did it against. Yeah, I did. I did it like I did. I don't mean to say that. It's just, it's just, it's just one of the things that I just say when I get the first reaction. I'm about to cook this, <laughs> right? So like, yeah, with, with crowds, yeah, but like with these quiet rooms, you kind of have to turn that switch off mm. because you kind of just have to go because you know when there's when there's 50 people in the room. Two people, three people just react. Yeah. Everybody's going to react. But if there's 10 people in the room, like, it's just going to be the two people reacting. Mm. It's not as influential as, like, you know, when, when there's a bigger crowd. So one of the pieces of advice that, you know, I got and that I had to start thinking about was um, just have you look at, look at your rounds like, like a presentation mm. instead of material, right? Instead of me looking at it like I'm the, I'm giving this material and you got to receive it in a certain way. This is just my presentation. Yeah. This is how I plan to say it. This is the vocal inflection I have at this part. This is the flow that I, this is how I want to say this bar. Like just plan that shit 
and just look at it like that because mm. that's how you got to do it. If if you're looking at it from that's what like a quiet room, you can't deliver something like da 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 da. Yeah. And wait, you got to keep going. So you got to do the da 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 da. You got to keep going. So like you that that's that's one of the things people don't realize. You got to keep going, and that's why the rappers are really shining in these rooms because. People will react, but the camera is it's more so the camera picking it up. My Jada Nightwing battle, my Kid Chaos battle, Smack was jumping around while we were rapping because he was that excited at yeah. the shit. You know what I mean? But you don't hear that. You only hear when most of the people re like react. Yeah. When there's just a couple people reacting, like my last battle, I battled B Magic. Um, it'll be out soon. Um, Smack was so excited and like. <laughs> That's crazy for me because I've been watching Battle Rap forever. So, like, you know, the smack told me the plans he got for me and all of that shit. So, to see that, as crazy as it is, you just have to tune it out. You only stop rapping if you get interrupted. Yeah. Right? Daylight gave me that piece of advice, too. He was like, um, don't rap. Like, wait, rap and just wait for the crowd to interrupt you. Mm. Don't, don't rap and then stop. And wait for them. Yeah, you, you got to keep going and let them interrupt you, and then stop, right? Especially in these rooms. So, um, it's kind of it's kind of dope for me because I get to do whatever. I don't I don't I don't have to punch every four bars now. Mm. I can just there's a big part of my B Magic battle where I just you know I just look at him and I just tell him everything I feel as a fan seeing him fuck up, mm. and it's probably sixteen bars with. No punchline. I, I think I say it before. I was like, all truth, no bars. Just listen. And then I just go on this tirade, and I'm just saying it to them. And they, they interrupted me because of how crazy it was. But they, they'll they catch something like that because of the environment. I They'll notice I'm saying all this hurtful shit to them, yeah. right? But I'm rhyming so much while I'm doing it. And then, you know, like like... Even though there's no crazy double entendre, it's effective. Yeah. You know, so like things like that really work in this. You could rap a lot more, you know, like flow switch ups. That's why I think I, I, I I've been getting a lot of shine so much because of this quarantine era. And like, it, I just wanna say and it helped because you're in a room with nothing but rappers, so they understand yep. that you you know, they like, yo, yeah. like he ain't saying nothing yeah. too too crazy, but he rapping to him right now. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. People people give rappers give different credit to different things like mm -hmm. fans some fans are just trained to listen a certain way other fans what I like about this quarantine era is it's kind of making fans have to decide for themselves yeah. and you kind of know who the sheep are when they say you know oh, all the battles without crowd reaction are whack it's like you're you're kind, you're the person that waits for somebody to react yes. and then reacts you know what I mean like this, that's the good shit. People, people are now starting to um, realize what they like and form their own opinions. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when the stage comes back, because this is kind of like retraining the fans to listen to a different thing. So like, if we get on the stage and that works on the stage instead of the old one, two, two yeah, right, one, two, like. But we don't know. We're we're all kind of guinea pigs right now. We're yeah. all just figuring this shit out. The, that was the crazy thing about uh, my battle with Jay. We we were the first Ultimate Madness battle ever on caffeine. This big fucking production. This yeah. first tournament uh, or or like a like a UFF type thing. We're just trying shit out. Mm. We don't know. Uh, that's why you know I was rapping a little faster then. Cause I thought they were just gonna cut us off like they did in the old UFL. Yeah. We're just guinea pigs, so everybody's kind of learning at the same time. And the people that are learning the quickest are the ones that are progressing. See, I didn't even know y'all were like the guinea pigs for that because y'all did both mm -hmm. of y'all did crazy. I feel like like mm -hmm. that could have went either way. I know J one, but that was like a toss up. Mm -hmm. and like that was the fact yeah. that that was y'all like first time, and that was like the first time like that was happening on caffeine that day. Yeah. I gotta give you some some bravo. I didn't even know that. that that's crazy. It. Yeah, that's, that's it, crazy. Was, it was the first ultimate madness battle ever wow 
Yeah, so, like, we that. show up. I didn't have butterflies for the longest time when I got used to this shit. Yeah. But I got it again mm. before my J battle. Like, right before I went on, I was, like, nervous. I was like, oh, shit. I haven't felt this in a minute. Like, even when I went to London on a, on the biggest stage I've been on, I, I wasn't that... I wasn't nervous. I was just, like, anxious. All right, let me see what happens. And when I, when I got the first laugh or reaction, I just went off. Right? But this is different. Now you're just rapping. Yeah. There's no affirmation on your material you just kind of you just kind of go, go you know yeah. what i mean like so and going yeah, from interesting. go from spade to, to to that to chaos to to to, to, to chilla i can see mm-hmm. that daylight uh su- a suggestion or advice working because that like just rapping like just like they'll mm-hmm. stop you you don't stop for them and right. it's interesting because i feel like he probably has one of the most like Perfect performances I've, I've ever seen against Tay Rock. Like, I mean, that, Rock, yeah. Like, I don't, Crazy. I can't think of too many performances of for a battle rapper that I would put over that. Like, that mm-hmm. just straight going and just like, like, I don't, like, it's, he said too much. Like, it was way, it was, he just, he had so much in that. And I feel like I can see that, I can see you, I can see you improving on that. Like, I see you every battle, mm-hmm. like, just going, going, going more and more. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's why I said, that's, that's why I really want to interview you because. I think that you have like the potential to be like just really like one of the, like the people like when they bring up the elite rappers, mm-hmm. your name is up in there, man. Uh, I appreciate that. That's the goal, man. Yeah. And um, yeah, to, to add on that, the reason <laughs> that I kind of had to change that is because when the crowds were around, I was shaking shit. Mm. You know what I mean? I was shaking crowds, so I was I was kind of like I said, I went to London on that stage against Spade. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Lex Luthor on I Battle. Uh, that that whole run I had over there. It, I was getting interrupted by the crowd, yeah. but I didn't realize that's what it was because I got to the point to where I knew, I I know they're about to react here, and I was never wrong. So that, but but that's the wrong way to write. You shouldn't write like that. You should just write and just go, right? So, um, yeah, I'm kind of evolving into. I'm kind of becoming really scary right now. You see, know? you are. So like, no, you are. So, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see. Hey, man, so. on, on, on top of your skills, you legit look like the uh, the real-life emoji, like, strong <laughs> emoji. Like, you're a freaking right. crazy guy, man. I don't want any smoke and rapping or fighting, man. I don't, I don't want no smoke with you, brother. But uh, I actually, I, I, Loso told me this when he met me. He was like, yo, you don't talk like you rap at all. And that's because I talk in this tone. But anytime I raise my voice, that's when, like, my voice just gets growly. Like, there's a growl when I, I raise my voice. It doesn't matter who it is. I could be talking to anybody, and, then, like, and, and that's how it is. So, like, the, I, I've i matured a lot, you know what I mean, to, to where I'm a little, you know, calmer now. Yeah. I used to be I used to be crazy. <laughs> Not crazy, but I was just, uh, I had a short fuse. Yeah. Like, you know how, like, you were asking me to, like, the questions earlier? I'd be kind of on edge back in the day, like yeah. when I was 18, 19. But as maturity goes, you you, you realize, like, yo, pe- people just want to know. Yeah. Like, relax, bro. Like, you, you don't need to... I was, one of, like, one of the dudes that was always ready to go, and it's like, all right, just enjoy. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at now. That's why I talk like this. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's this growl in my voice when I just... I'm, my point is, I'm a nice dude, for right? Sure, for sure, I'm a, I, I try to be as humble as I can, and then... um. But yeah, when I'm battling somebody that's they're attacking me, I, I gotta fucking chop their head off. For you know sure, what I mean? So, sure. and yeah. you got the warrior <laughs> spirit of coming from the sick background, so that makes yeah, a lot of sense. Absolutely. And I, uh, when I'm learning about other people's cultures, I always want to be super respectful. So I hope I, nothing came off as like distasteful or nah, anything. Nah, dude, okay. nah, nah, okay, okay, nah, nah. Okay. You're good. Okay. You're good. Okay, yeah. Because okay. okay. I, I was I was saying that to say how I used. To yeah. Be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was so. Yo, I started fighting at, when nine eleven happened. People that looked like me, like it was lit for us, yeah. right? So like we, I was fighting almost every week until like, like I was fighting all the time. So I had a short fuse. Like people, people, like I was irrationally. I don't know if irrational is the word. I was, I was just on edge, yeah, because sure. I felt attacked. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, yeah, I, I'd get in fights a lot and shit like that, but. Yeah, that was just me saying how I used to be. No, for sure, for yeah. sure. You know, as you grow up, as you mature, as you, you know, start to think about your actions before you do them, and just, just like, think with logic. Like, it, there, there was a lot of dumb shit that I did, you know, and now at 26, I just turned 26, 
which is crazy. I'm like over the hump. I'm closer to thirty. <laughs> like that's crazy to me. But but yeah, you just you just grow and mature. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a very like laxed person now. For sure. You Happy I mean? belated so, birthday, by the way. Uh, thank you, man. Of course. Appreciate yeah, it. Always want to make sure you're being respectful. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, you look like you would give me a clothesline from hell, and I just don't <laughs> want those problems at all, man. Um, right, right. But, uh, good, but 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 uh, yeah, and then it's uh. It's, it's 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 crazy because you bring up your maturity and your age because it's not because you look old but you seem like you are way much older than you are for multiple reasons and I want to bring that mm-hmm. up because uh, I feel like I bring this up every interview and people are like why are you guys bring this up but I am like a psychology major I'm in college for psychology mm-hmm. so I just observe people like before I even talk to them and just observing mm-hmm. you the way that you break people down in your raps this the way you word stuff your demeanor the way you come off. I was like, oh, he has to be, like, in his 30s or something, right? Like, 32. Right, And right. then you come out and it was like, I'm 25. I'm, I'm like, huh? That don't make sense. <laughs> so then I'm like, well, like, is he, like, lying about his age? Like, what is going on? Right, so then right. I'm like, yo, this guy's super <laughs> mature. And then I came to the conclusion that you probably grew up with a lot of older people and just hung around a lot of older people in your life, and that's the way that you became who you are. I don't know if I'm right in that. Assumption. 100%. You, you're 100% right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it is. My, um... My older sister, she's five years older than me. So, you know, I hung around her a lot. Um, in in high school, my friends, older brothers, we'd hang out a yeah. lot. You know what I mean? So, like, I grew up around older people. So, so yeah, that's the, I, that's what I attributed it to as well. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's what I think it is, too. So, like, yeah, just growing up around older people, you kind of just, you, you get the wisdom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you get the all, all of that stuff because there's some people my age that aren't as you know laxed and mature as I am. You know, maturity doesn't have an age; it's it's a learning thing. So, yeah. No, I, I I definitely thought so because when you when you're giving advice, when you're breaking down people, you kind of have to know who you are as a person to even try right. to uh, do that and assess people's problems. So, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of people in our age group. They're still trying to figure out who they are. You know, people are still trying yeah. to live life or whatever. Definitely in my age group because I'm, I'm a little younger than you. But still, the fact that you're at that place in your life, I feel like that's mm-hmm. a great sign of maturity. And uh, I don't know if you're proud of that, but hey, for, for, for yeah, you, I'm proud of that 100%. for you, man. I'm proud of that for you. Man. <laughs> Thank so. you, man. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely am proud of that. Um, yeah, I just, it just, that I get that a lot too. It's not only like the beard or whatever, it's also the way I carry myself. Yeah. That people often think that I'm older. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I was. Uh, I started battling at twenty, mm. and my first battle, people thought I was like twenty-seven, yeah, thirty. You know what I mean? Something, something like that. Just because, like, and I, I got to tell them, I was like, "Yo, like Indians get beards at 15. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's like part of it's part of our genes, bro. Like, <laughs> but uh, naturally yeah. hairy people. I've been around Indians, and like in high mm-hmm. school, I'm like, bro, how do you? You're like thirteen <laughs> with a long beard. Like, how is this <laughs> possible, bro? You, you know what's crazy about my people? So, like, we're northern Indians. We'll, we'll have beards. We'll have, like, leg hair. But, yes. like, not arm, no back hair, no arm hair. You know what I mean? It's just, like, those, our head, yeah. or, like, our face, and then, like, our legs, maybe. And then that that's that's not, that's it. I'm cursed, bro. I, I don't I'm, know I'm hairy everywhere else that I, that I don't want to be hairy yet. But I don't. <laughs> it's not here, bro. No everywhere. Beard, yeah. No, no. Dead. So frustrating, yeah. man. So frustrating. Yeah, but uh, but hey, I appreciate you giving me your time. I don't want to keep too much of it. I do have one more question. If we Let's can go. get into the uh, predictions, into uh, volume six tomorrow, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. Let me pull up on Smack page. Also, a uh, quick laugh. I was on your page and I seen you retweeted the uh, Mickey Fax thing about <laughs> about uh, Lux and Mook talking about Trump. That was uh, oh my I, God. I didn't know that was a thing until I went on your page and I actually sat down and watched the entire video. Of them talking about uh, Trump is, uh, yeah, they were in their MAGA bag. <laughs> they were going crazy. Yeah, like, like, the, like I, I, I gave it, like, I'm, I'm not the the guy that just sees a headline, yeah. and then goes. I like to look more into it. So I had, I, I the episode wasn't out yet. I mm-hmm. think so. I was like, oh man, like for real, and then. When the episode came out, I actually saw it yesterday. Yeah, full MAGA. He's stopping child trafficking. Shut up, bro. Hey, hey, I mean, serious, quote Mook. Mook, like, Mook said verbatim, Trump is saving the children. I was like, what is going on? And and this is the unfortunate part crazy. about all of this is like, 
you know, your your thoughts are just the shit that you observe. So whatever they're looking at is is what's you know they think they're super right. We think we're super right, but it's like I feel like logic is on our side. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I I just that that whole thing is so aggravated to me, bro. I I tried not to even get into it. I'm I'm, um, I'm I'm gonna leave it at this because I don't I don't even want yeah. you to talk about it too much. I don't want that to be like the thing about this. But I believe it at this: the way Mook explains stuff to somebody who really might not know a lot about the topic, he sounds super just like because like he was con- like he was convincing me, but I could see how he could convince somebody who really he's didn't a know a rapper. lot. Yeah, he's super he's a good. Battle at that. rapper. That's he's that's one of his that. one of his strengths. Yeah, is like Nori. He could watch Mook and Rock and not know about anything. He didn't know about Rock with the contacts. Yeah. He didn't know about the rumors about Rock. Yeah. But just the way that Mook wrapped it, it's like very convincing. Yeah. So start from the bottom of the card. We got Ill Will versus Danny Myers. How about this? I go first and you go second on all these. I'll throw mine. Let's do it. Uh, Ill Will, Danny Myers. Uh, I'm going to take. That's a goodie. I feel like that's going to be a debatable 2 1 either way. I really can't pick a winner in that one. I don't know what you mm-hmm. said. Uh, but I, I, I might give a slight edge to Danny, but that could be a debatable. Mm-hmm. I think Danny is going to be, you know, top Danny for him because yeah. he he didn't do good. Well, he did good against Jerry, but he like messed up in the second. Yeah. And I know Danny as as the bar guy, the crazy. You know what I mean? He's he's like I'm not going out like that. But I think you know, Ill Will is more dimensioned. He he has more weapons in his arsenal. Mm-hmm. Like I as as a rapper that does more than just punch. Yeah. Um. That that works yeah. <laughs> against punchers because you know I I learned that because you know when I battled Chilla Chilla rap like twice as long as me yeah and it's debatable <laughs> like if I have forty eight more bars than you there's no reason this this should be debatable yeah. right but you okay. know I think it's because of the other stuff I was doing so like ill will not only is he physically imposing so he's gonna be talking down to Danny he's fire yeah he's been on a crazy run you know what I mean battling two people on uh, in the same day is ridiculous like and not even like like at different times yeah. you know what I mean it was like back to back that's crazy to me but also like he's he does this you know what I mean he can break you down he's somebody that like he he can crack on you, mm-hmm. he'd do the big fat funky Terrell thing that he did with like T Top. He could like crack jokes on you. Or he could demean you. He could bar out with you. He yeah. could bark on. Mm-hmm. He could do everything. And Danny's gonna be at a certain speed. It's gonna be great. Yeah. But he's gonna stay there. And even if he has like an angle, it's gonna end in a gun bar. Yeah. <laughs> like whereas Ill Will is gonna. He can he can have bars about just anything. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm always gonna go for <laughs> unless they're battling Nitty because the the punching thing works against people if you are the best at it. Mm. Like <laughs> Nitty Nitty's one of the people that he could battle somebody like T Top. Yeah, and win the first two rounds or whatever. Right? Like like or or like he could battle somebody that's gonna do more shit. Yeah, but still arguably win just because of that's how good he is yeah you got to be on that level to just do one thing you know what i mean but uh yeah I, I, i'm i'm going with it will okay two that's, one that's, i think i think danny will get around that's gonna be a good that's, that's gonna be it's gonna be yeah. good either way um now we got beat out versus chilla jones i'm not gonna lie chilla jones is a really good rapper i love chilla jones but mm-hmm. beat dot right now i feel like he's at a different level than i uh, like most people like i feel like he is like entering that stage where he's like, yo, I'm finna enter God tier. And I feel like mm-hmm. B Dot can do that. So I feel like this year he's gonna close it out crazy. And um I think this is gonna be a clear uh win for B Dot, man. I'm gonna yeah. go B Dot. I think that uh <laughs> B Dot will rap better than Chilla. Mm-hmm. But I think that Chilla will battle better than B Dot. Mm. And I don't know if I'm biased because I stood in front of Chilla, but Chilla has like a he he's been around for a minute, so yeah. he's battled every kind of rapper. Yeah, he's battled, you know, just punchers, anglers, whatever. He's he's battled people, so he kind of he's not the guy that's gonna rebuttal a whole angle that you did, but he is the guy that knows how to diffuse certain shit, right? Mm-hmm. Just in the way that he starts rapping, 
B Dot goes crazy. He does the crazy thing. You know, Triller, Triller's head is down, right? And it's his turn. He just looks up, towel towel on his face. So da 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 da. He'll just say one line and people will start laughing. Yeah. No 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 no. He'll just you know what I mean? that like, happened with you he, first. He said that first bar, first bar at the gate. He said something about you and like yeah yeah, yeah like and that's that's the crazy <laughs> thing. I had a dog vet thing, but I threw it away. Mm. I was like, man, that's I can't use this against Trilla. <laughs> so I was laughing in my head when he was like, I'm about the dog sick. But good thing you earned a vet. Or yeah. Something. And then I was like, "Come on, bro! <laughs> God damn it!" But uh, no, Chilla knows how to win, man. Chilla, Chilla. Uh, look, I'm a rapper, rapper. I, I, I think I'm gonna like hearing B Dot's material better. Yeah. Um, but Chilla, <laughs> Chilla's angry. Chilla's well rested. You know what I mean? Like Chilla hasn't battled since me. So like, like. I think he had a one rounder somewhere else, but like a three round battle on Smack, he he hasn't battled since me. B dot battled top, he battled Holmesy. I don't think B dot will be like not rested, but mm-hmm. I think Chilla's just very rested. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to to call, man. I think it's gonna come down to preference, and uh, but I think Chilla might edge it. You know what I mean? B dot is amazing. I think it's either going to be hard to call or it's going to be a clear B dot win. But if it is a clear B dot win, I'm going to text you about it. I'm going to be like, "Hey, I told you, I told you." But uh, I'm not uh, all. I think all of these are are like that to where like these predictions. I wouldn't bet money um, on any of them. Yeah, I would just. And I've been saying this: if I bet money, it'd be like a penny. I put a penny over here. Penny over. I'm not betting a good amount of money because it can go any way. They're all good battles. There's, they're all of them, bro. It's crazy. Let's see. Uh, Jerry West versus Arsenal. Um, mm. That's I don't I don't know how this style clash is going to work. This is a very big style clash. Uh, very uh-huh. two different rappers, two very different approaches. Like I look at Jerry West is like he's the guy's going to. He's probably going to have a prop or two. He's going to have like the the funny bars or whatever. Arsenal is just going to like. Probably talking about like sticking a finger up like his grandmother or something crazy, you know, <laughs> like something outrageous. So yeah. I, I don't know. Like I don't even know how this is going to turn out. I'm gonna let you call this one. I think that uh, this setting, <clears throat> Ars is in his bag in mm. this setting. Yeah. So like, so like, he could just go. Yeah. So he could have something about your grandmother and then rap eight bars about just killing you and then go back to fucking your mom and then go you know what I mean like but he raps really really good so like that works he's one of the guys that just goes right Uh, Jerry is incredible too like his punches are crazy um but and and he's creative as fuck yeah Yeah. like with the props and all this other shit he does but um I think I think Ars Ars might get this one Okay. Ars might get this one just because of the setting. Okay. It might. I think. I think it would be closer if there was, uh, like, if it was on a, a big stage or something like that. I think it it would be closer. But um, yeah, right. I think Ars is gonna get it. Uh, we got T Top versus Easy to Block Captain. Now this kind of goes back to me saying that I've been kind of out the loop this year. I don't think I've ever seen an Easy to Block Captain battle. So mm. this might be my introduction to Easy to Black Captain, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna throw I this think you got the app, right? I do have the app. app. Yeah, I do have the okay, app. Okay, so <clears throat> so a quick history on Easy. Easy has been, you know, early 2010s. He was active for like a year or two, but mm-hmm. then he got locked up. You know what I mean? And then um, he came back toward the end of the decade, and he was in the tournament with me. Uh, he was on the other side of the bracket, and the the battle that he lost on, he battled Fonz. And the battle he lost on, all the fan votes had him winning. Mm. So it was like a controversial decision. He's not a super lyrical guy. He, him, him and T-Top are is such a good battle okay. because they talk that same shit. So like, uh, then he got on Rookies vs. Vets, and then everybody said he 30 would Cortez. Mm. Um, and then he just battled Danny. That's on the app. So okay. watch that on the app. Okay. That's a great introduction to Easy. Okay. Um, and what he does. Okay. You know what I mean? So... Uh, I've heard Easy's rounds, so I, oh. I don't know if I'm biased, but like, he's about to go crazy in there. Like, he's he knows how big this opportunity is, and it's it's dope because like a lot of people for when they discuss Rookie of the Year, they bring up me and him. You know what I mean? Because we've had like the same amount of battles yeah. or whatever, and um, like he, I know that 
I so that's the good thing about all of us rookies, right? We're we're all talking to each other. Yeah. If Dre got a battle coming up, he's gonna hit me up so I can hear his rounds. If I got a battle coming up, I'm gonna hit up Kid Chaos and we're gonna spar. You know what I mean? Easy will hit me up. Yo, I got this. Fonz got Av coming up. He'll be like, Yo, I get. The, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're all keeping each other on our shit. So um, yeah, Easy's gonna go crazy, but I'm never underestimating T Top. Like he he knows what to do. I think his angles will be crazy, but you know, I, I I'm going with Easy. I think this will be Easy's breakthrough. Mm. Um, he's ready. You know what I mean? He's been ready. So I, I think he's going to show that. Right, well, you got me sold in this battle now, so I'm going to be, I'm gonna be uh, yeah. anticipating that watch, for sure. Watch Easy and Danny. Watch okay, Easy for sure. I'm a, as soon as we it's hang up. It's a great up, battle. As yeah. soon as we hang up and I get through putting this together, yeah. watching yeah. Easy versus Danny for sure. Yeah. Uh, because I think besides me and Chilla, <laughs> I think me and Chilla was probably the best rookies versus vets battle. Yeah. But Easy and Danny's right, right under that. Mm. You know okay. what I mean? So, okay. yeah. Uh, the co-main event We got Pat Stay Versus K-Shine Now that's interesting Because I kind of forgot To bring this up One yeah. of these days I want to see you Versus Pat Stay Because I feel like You guys have that Breakdown uh, yeah, You guys yeah. also Kind of buff uh, You guys kind of Have like uh, <laughs> you, you guys have Similar demeanors I feel like During your, your rounds And whatnot. I feel like you guys are mm-hmm. You're both your own Artists They're both your own Battle rapper artists And whatnot. But I feel like you guys That's like a perfect uh, Style matchup to me so mm-hmm. I just want to throw it out there. I don't know if you ever, uh, I don't know if how you feel about that matchup, but I think yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I, you know, <laughs> I get that a lot too. I think it's because like, um, I think one thing I do that I probably learned it from watching Pat stay is, you know, bring sarcasm yeah. into the you're in, funny in, into shit. Yeah, like yeah. that. A lot of people are funny. Yo, battle rappers are funny as shit, bro. Like, but they don't show it, mm. and it's like, yo. You can do this on stage and yeah. people will laugh, bro. Like, like, like when I'm battling Chilla, a bunch of name flips, I'm getting real sick of this shit. It's a quick, it's not a crazy bar, but it's a quick little, I said it with a smile, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a quick sarcastic thing that's going to get people to react. Like, and Pat is very good at that. Uh, yeah, that would be a crazy, a crazy battle. I don't, I, I think I would like, Laugh the most on stage <laughs> if I battle Pat Stay because and, you know he's he's crazy, and I think that goes right back to the battle. I feel like uh, he's such an interesting rapper because K Sean could have round of the year, and then Pat Stay like will say one line, and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> like this is just silly. So it's one of those battles where I feel like this is like the the battle where like um this, he's gonna K Sean's gonna be tough, of course, and then Pat Stay is gonna like just have like your funny bars, your witty bars, and also break him down because that's another thing that mm-hmm. I feel like. A lot of people don't give him credit for. It. He's just a very good angler in how to like break you down on who you are and to kind of yeah. like make you look at yourself. So I feel like, uh, hey man, I don't know. I probably shouldn't did these uh, predictions because I feel like this is a toss up. I, I don't know who I'm picking. Them yeah, for. no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with okay. you because, like, Sean looks unbeatable right yeah. now. You know what I mean? I think, uh, <clears throat> but the only person that can find a way is somebody like Pat Stay. But then you don't know. What he's gonna do Yeah You don't know if Pat is gonna be like Alright man You know Like People are playing with my My rapping ability This is a perfect room for that Yeah So I'm gonna do that You know what I mean Fuck it Let me show you guys what I do Or you don't know if like You <laughs> He's one of those battle rappers that It's kinda like Goods and Geechee too mm. So like It's it's like you don't know They don't have one style like Pat doesn't have one style, so you don't know yeah. what he's gonna do. He could do anything, but um, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think this is a goat battle for me mm. because both of those guys are people that have like influenced or inspired me. You know what I mean? Pat Stay and Shine, both of those guys. Um, there's only like five battle rappers that have probably inspired me. And and they're they're two of them, you know. He's so like that. That's that's hard for me to decide, man. I think I just gotta watch, it's watch and see. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't know <laughs> because as much as I could say, Kayshawn is gonna <clears throat> say some ridiculous off the wall shit. There goes that where Pat Stay can yeah. just say one line and then take the thing back, take the energy back. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I think. I don't know. 
I hope it's like one one going into the third because yeah. I love those battles. <laughs> For sure. Uh, and now we're gonna end it with the main event: Geechee versus Goods. I think this is an interesting yeah. battle because Goods, when he battles people, he usually can like, hey, like I'm going to little bro you. And I don't think you could do that to Geechee. I don't think you could like make him look like a mouse or, or a little person. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. maybe Goods can because he's he's very like you would think going into a lot of these battles like, he can't do that against this person. It's like wow, mm-hmm. I'm looking at him completely different. But the way I look at this, I I think it's a toss up. It's kind of hard to call. But if I had to pick a winner, I would say it might be Geechee just because of his he 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 can come out of almost any situation looking like wow like he just the way that he can word stuff and tell you about his life and like you can never little bro me i've been through way too much for you to try to mm-hmm. do this to me it's kind of hard to sun him in that aspect so if i had mm-hmm. to pick a winner i say geechee but another one of those toss-ups <clears throat> yeah it's another one that's hard to call because goods is one of the the rappers that kind of you know he takes off for so long that every time he battles, it's a comeback. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> so like, it's it's like you you he does it every time. Yeah. So how can you doubt him? But at the same time, like, Geechee's been in the field, and this is the <laughs> most he's we, he's shown us that he's one of the guys that can battle fucking three times a month and do crazy yeah. in every battle. And now he hasn't battled. On URL since clips, right? Yeah, that was uh, that was like since some months ago. That was August yeah. or September. Yeah, I think he battled Snake Eyes in like October or something. But that was like on his league. Yeah, he's he's rested. That's rest. Yeah, for him. You know what I mean? Like, like giving him. I, I know he's like me. You know, me and Chilla had fourteen days, mm. and that's what happened. Me and Kid Chaos had fourteen days. That's what happened. Mm. So when you give me like a month. That's an eternity. He's had about two months. Yeah. I know he's like that too. So, and he's more used to this environment. He battled Verb here. He battled Clips here. You know what I mean? And Goods, I think, I think Goods will show people, because Goods is a great rapper. So Goods will be rapping <clears throat> and doing what he does. He's, he's, he's going to find a whole, he's like Pat Stay. He's going to, Find a, a crack in the armor, yeah, and he's gonna attack it. Has you know Goods I mean? been on so, caffeine? No. Nah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so this, this is caffeine debut. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's why I said it's like a comeback yeah. every time he battles. So I okay. I feel like he's I think he's gonna do something new against Geechee that people haven't done to Geechee. Mm. But Geechee's been in the field, so I'm a I'm gonna edge it to Geechee. But again, I I wouldn't be surprised. If it was the other way around, so. Hey man, yeah, you guys go watch Volume Six tomorrow. I think it's going to be one of the best cards of the year, hopefully, uh, because yeah. it's, it's a lot of good matchups. And hey, yeah. I appreciate you coming through. If you have any last words that you want to say to the people, let it be known. Yeah. Um. Shit, man. Thanks. Thanks for all the support. Uh, this has been the best year of battle rap for me. You know what I mean? And next year, looking the. Just when you hear what I got next, it looks like next year is going to be even better. You know what I mean? So I appreciate the support. Look out for my B-Magic battle. Um, that shirt that I be wearing, I wore it against Kid Chaos, King J. Was, until I had a line about it. Yeah. That's merch. All right? That's not the same shirt. It's merch. Right? I had a feeling that's so what that was. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like that, that, that'll be out soon. Okay. I'm making a website. It's going to have my music on it, my merch. Uh, all of, all of that stuff that has to do with real sick, um. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for my B Magic battle, and uh, yeah, man. Thank you, thank you for the support and the good words. I appreciate it. Of course. Lastly, before we get out of here, I want to say that's great branding because when people watch your battles, they're like, oh, he always has a shirt on. So now when he's out his merch, he's like, oh, so it's I want I actually like that shirt. I actually want to yeah, buy it. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's good right, branding. Right. So for everybody yeah. watching right now, until next time, I appreciate it. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters are going to hate, players are going to play, and you guys holler at